All right, so we are back with Riddle the Sphinx part three after what, like a year and a half or something? I think the last yeah. video is like October 2018. So we're finally back. Man. Yeah, le uh, last time we left off, we were going underneath the sarcophagus and we came out into this large hallway uh, that's kind of a loop. Uh, and there's a ton of stuff to do in this hallway. So in the interesting thing is this part, this gameplay that you're seeing, I recorded this at the same time as part two. So I recorded parts two, three, and four at the same time. Uh, so it's been quite a long time since I actually played. So this is honestly, it's going to be a little bit blind for me as well. Uh, yeah, let's so. figure out uh, what 2018 Varun was, uh, was up to these days. Yeah. Let's see. Now, uh, I am somewhat of an expert. I finally went back and rewatched Indiana Jones um, this past break, you know, with all this like quarantine stuff. I only got through the first three. I mean, I don't know if people like accept King of the Crystal Skull as like an actual movie. Maybe not, but I think the first one is about like Egyptian mythology or whatever. So I'm like an expert now. So I will. Wait, what's the, what, which, which is, what's the ordering? Um... Uh, oh God. Um, the Lost Ark. That's the first one. That's the first one. The Lost Ark. Uh, the second one's the Temple of the Doom, where they go to like India. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a weird one, dude. And then the third one is the Last Crusade. Like, I think they, like, you know, his dad shows up and and all that stuff. Um, they're actually pretty fun movies, I think. But, uh, yeah, actually, I had a, I had a lot of fun watching. Wait, which is I mean, the one with the with the Holy Grail? That's the third one. That's the Last Crusade. Okay. Yeah. Is that also the one where the, the guy's faces melt off, or is that Lost Ark? I think that's the Lost Ark. Okay, so I have seen all three of them. I was wondering if uh, there was one that I hadn't seen. Uh, plus, I know that we watched the the fourth one in theaters when it came out. Yeah, yeah, Crystal Skull. I think I was, I was young enough that I liked it. I, I was think. young enough to be traumatized by the ants scene. You oh, know, dude. Whether the ants, like, absorb the guy. God damn, man. <laughs> Had yeah, nightmares for weeks. Messed up. It. Jeez. Well, all the, all the movies have, like, snakes and, like, weird, like, animals and, like, crickets and stuff. It's gross, but I don't know. I guess people are into that. Oh, wait. How'd you, um, move that uh, I think I forward? sat on, like, a chair um, okay. and opened this secret passageway. You know, going back through the first two parts, so I saw the first two parts yesterday... There's a ton mm -hmm. of puzzles that we didn't solve that we just kind of walked past. Really? And even yeah. this, I'm seeing a bunch of stuff that, that we're walking past. Mm -hmm. And I just noticed, like, there's a symbol with, like, a maze that keeps popping up everywhere. So I don't know what the deal with that is. I think there's, like, a, quite a lot of stuff that is yet to be uncovered in this game for us. So. Yeah, it's uh, quite interesting how they, like, just jam-packed so much content into this game. I mean... It's a little confusing, honestly, because <laughs> so much of the game, like is a uh, open from the start and there's so many different areas that you have to go in between uh, i do wonder if they could have you know streamlined it a little bit uh so you don't have to like go traveling around all the time but yeah you know, that is that is how it is you know <laughs> plus like it's not like this game is like big enough where there's like guidebook and stuff like it was like you know back then like there was a prima official guy for like all the main big games but obviously this game wasn't big enough to have one of those so it's just yeah it's it, true it's just so likely that so many secrets just get left unexplored just because like there's no way to know like half of these things you know so an interesting thing is um i was looking at the comments on the previous parts and i was surprised to find that um so there's two types of comments one is people who are nostalgic for the game right they played it back in the day but there are comments from people who are still trying to play the game and recently purchased it from Big Fish. So I was kind of surprised as to like, you know, why why are people still playing this game when it's quite old and unsupported? Uh, but I think the reason is that actually there just aren't that many games of this type that are out there. Uh, so if you're like an aficionado of these types of adventure games, I think you'd quickly exhaust uh, the, ca the um, category of good ones, right? Or ones that yeah. are still, let's say ones that are still like available for purchase and run well and things like that you'd quite uh rapidly exhaust those and end up yeah. in like stuff that's essentially abandoned where meaning that like it's not currently being sold anywhere i guess the the only major ones are like missed and like those kinds of games right yeah 
and these just, games, you know, they don't have a, exactly have a lot of replay value because once you know the puzzles, you know the puzzles. Yeah. There's also like, do you remember like the Monkey's Island or whatever? That's another set of these games, right? I think it's the same. Yeah, kind of game. like the the point and click 2D adventure yeah. games. Although that's like, it's almost like a different genre, I'd say. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we're just poking around some of these. Uh... I think people like the the first person ones because they're they're very immersive. You really get sucked into the to the environment. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. Monkey's Island is probably more like Pajama Sam or like Putt Putt or whatever, right? Yeah, it is. It is exactly. I think it's the same Scum engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scum engine. Dude, Putt 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 goes to the zoo is next. What a what a classic. But this, yeah, I remember, those are really actually those... th that game, if I remember correctly, it was replayable because they would randomize some stuff each time you played. So I think there'd be like a set of tasks, um, and then the game would pick randomly out of that set for you to actually a uh, task for you to actually do. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like the first roguelike or something. The first roguelike. <laughs> different, <laughs> no. different experience every time you play. No, that, that that's actually like a pretty cool mechanic. I think. I, I feel like I don't really see that a lot games yeah that's true i mean well i mean i think it's because like they want to make sure that you experience as much as possible on your first playthrough uh they don't want to hide content you know for for later yeah playthroughs. that's true because why would they why would they put in put an effort making something if the player isn't going to actually see it they're just like a pot just chilling Oh wait, are you trying to like poke a hole in the pot or oh just put put the pot in your inventory but it's not working? Uh I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. I think <laughs> I picked up some arrows. Uh oh, okay. So back and to And if the I remember now. correctly, there's also a bunch of bolts that are in this hallway. Um and these bolts you can then take those and then put them in the in the harp, um, way back in the in the serpent or in, in the like the snake area. The harp? Okay. I see, I see. Yeah, there's a ton of rooms in this area with a ton of puzzles. Yeah, this is this is just this is too much. I mean there's just so many so many things to like interact with and explore. And so many like red herrings too. I think I think we may have talked about this in a previous episode, but like just so many things that just lead nowhere, right? Huh, what is so it looks like another scroll that's probably related to some puzzle, but I don't I don't know what that's related to yet. Yeah, actually, um, in terms of red herrings, like, there's a... Like, I think I mentioned in the previous part that everything on the ground looks like treasure, so it looks like cool stuff that you're supposed to be able to interact with. But in reality, like, like you can't interact with that many things. There's something. It's just another screw. Oh no! It's oh, a I think key. I think I think that's one of the bolts actually for the oh for the harp. So do we end up? I guess we shouldn't spoil. <laughs> I don't know, have do you have you seen this part yet? Like, do you remember like what what we do in this part? Uh, I skimmed through it, um, uh, but mostly just to make sure that there weren't any more tapes or like mm -hmm. places where we had to cut the commentary. Okay. Yeah, no, it must be it must be tough also to like get like a sense of progression in this game, right? There's just you don't know like I guess there's like a main quest. It is quite open from the from the very start. Yeah. Yeah, what's the whole like story again? Or is there like what happened with the tapes? I uh the forgot. story the setup was that there was a a secret passageway discovered in the Sphinx. Um You know, in the in the beginning there's like a tunnel that goes into the Sphinx. Um but the, the guy who discovered it, I guess he got sabotaged or something. I don't know if we know exactly what's happened to him at this point. Uh, but he sent for us because he's uh, we're like his student. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out what's happening. Oh, okay. Uh, this vase has got like a, a pattern on the left. I'm pretty sure that's relevant to some puzzle. It's got like some stars on it. Uh, I don't think... We've seen that puzzle yet, but I think we get to it at some point. What is what is this? In the past, I'm confused, and in the present, I'm confused. 
it, it just it almost feels like this is one of those like memory games where like you know you like flip all the a bunch of cards until you, you remember all the pairs or whatever oh yeah uh, it just feels like this what is kind of like goes a, in what in what lock or what yeah, abstract key like, goes in what abstract lock right 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 so like you know you have to remember the puzzle that corresponds to like and then you go see the picture on like the vase and then you see, oh, hey, this reminds me of like this puzzle. Or you see the picture on the vase first, and then you go and find the puzzle. Yeah. And then you know how to solve it. I mean, there's just this is kind of overwhelming. There's just like so many different things to. Uh, so it to looks memorize. like I put that wood block inside that inside the hole, but what does that actually do? Something with the flute. Oh yeah, is this like a woman just like playing the flute or something? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so many paintings, but there's also like a lot of attention to detail, I think. I mean, for like, you know, a shovelware game or whatever, there's definitely like a lot of... Well, I would say it's not shovelware. <laughs> if yeah, it, it's if probably it bad, it, it would be it would be shovelware. But I think actually this game is pretty, it's pretty impressive for a two-person dev team. Mm -hmm. And I think the amount of content is uh, very, very impressive. It's, a, I think it's a pretty big game. Oh, deceptively, sure. Deceptively so, because it starts out in like a... Um, you, like, it starts out and it's just, like, the, the Sphinx, right? But then you realize, oh, there's, like, another pyramid that I can go into, and there's, like, two chambers that I can go into, and a whole another disc. I mean, you'll see, so I think in the next part, we even go to a whole new location, which is just crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the devs are still active, right? I know they're making some, like, other... I just remember hearing that they're making some other game, like the Omnicron or something like that. Uh, well, uh, so there was a sequel to this game called The Omega Stone that was released Omega after Stone. after it was made. But I think right now, um, the devs are doing a Kickstarter uh, where they're going to make a remake of this game. Oh, really? Uh, with real-time 3D graphics in Unity. Oh, wow. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Although I'm sure, Now we have uh, to donate to the Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That could be really fun, though. I mean, I, I th there is something cool about like the asynchronous style or like the the point and click style that i think like um i don't know it just it reminds me so i watched this movie so i'm taking like a science fiction film class and i watched this movie called la jete which is it was made in the 60s but it's like a slideshow um and it this is weird like time travel like time loop story but it's Sorry, really you're cool. telling me you're saying that you watched a movie that's just a slideshow yes uh a slideshow with narration um it's some like weird like you know abstract stuff but it was actually really art cool house, art house stuff right 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 but there was one scene where the frames got fast like you know because they did a lot with like the way they chose the frames and like the speed in between frames and things like that yeah so it's not like it was just a slideshow like it was obviously like a lot of thought was put into it but you know there was one scene where like it became live action like just for a second and it was like super shocking and like super disorienting. And I, I was just remember I was just thinking like, you know, for like a point and click adventure like this, like um there is some like, you know, value to um in addition to having like you know, you know, there's like a cutscene earlier where you're like controlling like the RC car or something, right? Like that was like a cutscene. Yeah. Right. So like I, I think like having these like, you know, short frame moments. I think to help like build up tension and things like that. Oh, so you're essentially comparing uh, a pre-rendered adventure game with a real-time type deal. Yeah. Right? I think in this format, you have a lot more precise control over framing and redirecting the player's attention. Uh, so you can make sure that like important objects are always framed in a certain way so that the player will notice them. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's like times where like you like click forward and it'll like slowly zoom in on like an object or something right yeah and uh that's just like i mean it's just it's just like a much more controlled experience compared to like you know a game in unity where you're just like running around where like yes you will have like some aspects of control but also like there's just gonna be a lot of like you know unused space or like just like suboptimal or like not exactly what was intended yeah um, by the developer uh, here's the so there's those are the stars. Um, I'm pretty sure that's related to the, the thing that was on the vase. Uh, don't remember where the actual. I think you just have to put stars basically in that spot, but I don't remember where those stars actually are. 
Anytime I see an outstretched hands, I figure you gotta put something in there, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if I have that item. But it, it, it tells you, right? Like, um, you, like, you can, like, try a bunch of different inventory items, and it'll, like, click or something. Oh, there are those stars. Oh, okay. Oh, it looks like the stars have got different things on them. So, it's not just any star goes anywhere. I also love that, you know that symbol of, like, the eye that was below the painting? You can't see it now, but... Um... Yeah, okay. I think it was just like, you know, like, the, the flag of all the stars, and then right below it, there's, like, that famous eye. It's, like, Horatio's eye, or, like... Horace? Uh, yeah, Horace, Horace's eye, yeah. Horatio, that's, like, a Shakespearean name. Yeah, that's, yeah, my bad, I feel my like bad. That's, a, that's a character in Shakespeare. <laughs> I think you're right. Hey, is uh, that a coronavirus sure. over there on the... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming for us. And... I have to imagine that all of these scrolls are basically clues for different puzzles. Uh, so you got to yeah. match like the the scroll with the puzzle, and then that will reveal part of the solution. Mm -hmm. I wonder, um, do puzzles ever get like? How does the, like the reward system for like fin for doing like a side puzzle? Like, does it just open up like a new area, and then you go in there, and then you solve more puzzles, or like? Is there like a reward system that's in play here? Uh, I mean, I gotta assume that there's only that you have to solve everything and every puzzle either opens up a new area or gives you an item that you need for some other puzzle. Mm. That's what that's like what I would assume is the structure here essentially. Okay. Makes sense. Um it's probably just like Oh yeah, the framing there was pretty cool. Um, but it's definitely like a lot different than like I guess games you see today or whatever you know modern games versus games back in the day but it's cool to see like a, you know a more subtle like reward structure than just like oh hey here's like a collectible or like here's an achievement or something like that yeah wait so are you putting the stars in the vase or are you taking them out uh i'm not sure what i'm doing i'm, I'm well i'm taking them out um i think well, I don't know. I think at this point you might be able to just take all the stars out of the vase. I don't know if the... I, I assume the stars are unique, uh, but then that would be kind of useless unless you actually know what you're going to do with them. So just crowd up your inventory, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's one thing that is a little bit, I think, just cumbersome is, like, having to scroll through the inventory and everything they, yeah they really should have like a, a 2d grid of, of items rather than like a, a line that you have to keep scrolling through so i think um a remake does seem like a good idea i mean because there's like so many cool ideas and, and that kind of stuff explored uh although like you know i think the discourse today around remakes is like super you know oh remakes are just retreading the old stuff over and over again like see like you know people talking about like Ariel or like you know whatever Disney movies are going on um but it, it would be cool to see like a genuine remake that gets to like address some of these like fundamental issues not I mean not like fundamental issues but like address some of these like cumbersome issues while still like yeah. maintaining like the spirit of the game if you will and make it run on modern systems as well as on uh mobile devices I think that's a pretty key platform for these types of games right I mean this would be perfect for like iPad really although I you would I'm have to change why you think so. You would have to change some stuff. Um, well, for I, I think the reason why it's good for mobile is because uh, there's a lot of similar games like The Room. The Room is probably the closest like modern incarnation of this genre. Have you have you played The Room? I've I I started it, but I've not I've not played it. I remember you, you told me to play it once. Yeah, it's probably the closest around. thing to to this. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I think. I think it'd be perfect for the form factor. You know, you can just like lie down in your bed and then like start playing this game and be immersed in a different world. I think it's perfect for that. Yeah, that's true. And also like, you know, iPad is, or mobile devices is what people actually have these days. You know? uh, there's there's uh, still like a healthy PC market, I mean. No, nah, dude, maybe not... computers are for nerds. Computers are for you know, nerds. Haven't, haven't you seen the, the Apple ads? The iPad is oh, the Oh yeah. What's a computer? Oh God. I mean, I think, I think, realistically like the ipad is is the device that um most casual audiences prefer to 
play games on or to just use as like a device. Uh, that could be wrong. <laughs> There's probably people who are like, no, I will, I will use my laptop or desktop for everything. Uh, but Maybe. I think like um, to reach the audience for this game now, you need to be on mobile. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I'm just thinking. Oh, Rusty Lake. Reason. Rusty Lake is the other franchise. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you've seen that, it's like the, it's like the closest thing to to what these games yeah. are. I'm just for some reason I'm just thinking about like, they made like Knights of the Old Republic. They made that on mobile, and I feel like the reception, like people actually like played it on mobile, which I remember being shocked because it's like you know an RPG, like. Um, you know, however, we played it on like computer or whatever. Uh, but well, I guess I, I like... played it on mobile. But um, the reason why I wanted to play it on mobile is just because it was an updated port of the game. If you played on PC, um, you just had to play like the old version with all of its incompatibility issues and like, you know, you know how old games are, right? They never quite work exactly the way they're meant to. Yeah. Uh, with like I don't know weird issues with like full screen not working properly or like resolution stuff. It never works. It never works the same. Uh, but with the mobile, they it's like a new, like a like upgraded code base, right? Right. Um, so uh, it was it was like a very convenient experience to play. Uh, so what's going on here? Um, we're in this room, and there's these statues. Which, if you go and like click on the statue, it lights up with a certain color in the eyes, and uh, you might find this boat to be very familiar. Uh, oh, this is the same boat from the other. Yeah, if you remember, there was another chamber with a boat and, like, um, cylinders on the side. Uh, and those cylinders, you could you could rotate the cylinders, and the cylinders had different colored eyes on them. Uh, so at this point, uh, I think I made the connection that, like, you're probably supposed to look up the eye color for each of these individual guys, then match it with the cylinders in the, in the boat chamber. That makes sense. However, there is one additional element to the puzzle. I may realize at some point, but we'll we'll wait until I get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, it's very unforgiving, I think, to like come back to this game, um, you know, like a year, a year and a half later. Um, I just I just remember like trying to play like Breath of the Wild after like not playing it for like six six months or like something, and just like having like literally forgetting everything. And then this kind of game is worse because. You know, you have to like memorize all these puzzles, and you have to like know what you're looking for. But yeah. if you come back after like this huge time gap, then you're like, wait, what's going on? Where am I? There's no like. Yeah, I don't you know, know. I don't know record. how we're gonna do. Uh, if we so we have part three, which is this, and then part four. I don't even know if there's gonna be a part five because then I have to go back into the game and then figure out where I am. I mean, probably I'm gonna be using a guide a lot because <laughs> yeah, uh, I I've just I'll, I'll just have forgotten like what's relevant and like what we already saw so uh, yeah it's not gonna be do we even have the save files uh i have the vm okay um, uh, so i have the entire vm saved this was done on on a windows xp vm so here's another vase with another star pattern i'm pretty sure that you can rotate these vases um but I think it was just glitching when I when I clicked on it. Yeah. That's another thing. This game does have some UI glitches, like especially like rotating stuff or like dragging things. Uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit off. So that's definitely stuff that they could fix for the the remake. I assume it's going to be a yeah. completely new code base because uh, uh, this I think it was made in Director, which is like it's like Shockwave. Um, so this is essentially it's essentially a Shockwave game. Um, that was made in macromedia director uh but then the new one's gonna be well that that project is completely dead and basically doesn't exist anymore shockwave and flash both are 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 dead i think we've talked about this before actually in our pepper skateboarding yeah video. yeah macromedia uh um yeah, what was i saying yes yeah, shockwave and flash are dead uh so the new thing that everyone uses is unity um, Flash actually, they got um, it got rebranded as Adobe Animate, and now it's just like focused on being an animation software rather than like a like a game or interactive application software. Because you know, Flash it used to be like like 
at first it was an animation software and then they added interactivity elements right and it became an entire game engine essentially mm -hmm. uh but now it's they're they're sort of focusing on the animation part of it yeah well what do they use now for like web games and stuff uh everyone's using unity Oh man. Yeah, because Unity has got HTML5 export, so that's, I mean, that's what everyone's using. I would say like 80, maybe 80% of all the games that you see on, all 80% of like indie games are, are using Unity across yeah. basically every platform, mobile, web, PC, like um, it's going to be all Unity, or even on consoles as well. Mm -hmm. Unity just took over everything. And some indie games are using Unreal um or cry engine but most people are using unity so you're just like picking these locks or just oh yeah you ropes. can cut the cut the rope oh oh can you climb this yes oh interesting oh jeez they just have to click on each step individually or something until one of them breaks and then Screwed. I think I'm doing a safety save. Yeah. So it is. Uh, the fun thing is, it is actually possible to die in this game. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wait. I think how? we might see we might see a death coming up at some point in this video. Not in this video, in the next video. Uh -huh. Although I think I may have I may have died just on purpose, just to see what what happens. Did you just like click like off a ledge or something, or? Uh, you'll see. All right. I think on the Unity thing, it's probably good that game making is more accessible, right? It, that, that, that oh yeah, feels definitely. Like, yeah. I think there are a lot of games that are being made now that would never be made before, uh, because you know game development it used to be. I mean, I remember back in the day I used to mess around with like doing OpenGL by myself, like just from scratch. Uh, but also there were some there were some engines at the time, but they were all so difficult to use, and you had to do you had to do so much of coding in like C plus plus. Yeah. Um, and you had to write, I mean, I, I think I had games that were like over a thousand lines of code, just, uh, and they were just barely, barely functional. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, back then it was so difficult. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty much, I, I think the only, the only thing that like regular people could use it was Flash. Um, yeah. Flash and, and, and Director were the only things that regular people could use. Hence, why this game is probably made in direct it was made in director, uh -huh. right? Because it was a very accessible tool set at the time. Uh, but now, now um, Unity took over. Yeah. Um, however, you know, there's tons of bad games being made in Unity. This is true, but because it's that's so kind of the price you pay. Yeah. But on the I other mean, hand, you can actually have it's like a very good low game price to pay. And... Um, I think, like you know, people yeah. are always like, oh, you know, there's so much of like crap on Steam or whatever. But I really don't care. You know, as long as I'm able to find the good stuff. It doesn't right. matter to me if there's like a bunch of asset flips. Asset flips. That's a great derogatory term. It's the, like that's that. a standard term that people use to describe like, because you know there's like the Unity asset store where you can buy yeah. any anything. So there's a ton of games on Steam where people just buy like, they buy a bunch of assets and then just cobble it together into the bare minimum of a game and then sell it. Nice. Oh wait, oh, is this the room with the other boat? No. Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like another room that we haven't even been in yet. Oh man. Oh no. We. Oh no. You're right. Yeah, we haven't been here. It's a little uh, keychain or something. Sacred amulet. And another scroll. Oh, maybe this oh, you know to the what? one with the flute. Yeah, I'm just realizing this now. I don't think that I've actually done this. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be. I mean, there's actually a ton of stuff that. <laughs> we would need to do if we ever do another episode yeah and i gotta imagine that everything's mandatory i can't imagine that there's any optional puzzles in this game or uh, at all uh, there might be i mean I, I would expect that at most there'd be one or two optional puzzles but i highly doubt it. i expect that everything's mandatory really i actually would have expected the opposite that like the main quest is only like a few puzzles i mean not a few but like not that many, but then there's so many like side quests and like different things and different puzzles that like open up different hints and things like that. But I guess that makes sense that everything is, you know, like somewhat related to like the main quest or the main storyline. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the final thing is to open up that secret passageway in the Sphinx. 
Yeah. I don't think we have even have any. I gotta assume because there's like little holes in in the in the door, and you gotta put something in those holes. But I don't think we have any of those things. Yeah. Unless maybe one of those things that we have it is one of those is something that you're supposed to put in the, in the door. What is this? Another. I think this is again for the harps. Yeah. I wonder if like regular people can complete this game. Uh, or I think is it I'm just, sure. Like, impossible. I'm sure you could uh, with a lot of time. A lot of time, but like uh, with no. I already guide. decided when I when I was starting that I, I would I would use a guide um, in order to keep the videos going, um, uh, because otherwise you know I would, there would just be like I would just get stuck for sure on on tons of different things. Yeah, there's just too much. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. This does again seem related to the boat. Don't know. Yeah. I'm, I think there is something that, that you can do here, maybe. Oh, yeah. Move the boat. I wonder if that moves like the actual boat. You know, I don't know. Uh, that does seem possible, though. I think the. Oh, there was, the a, there was a cut, I oh, think. There's so, a cut. What am I? Where am I? <laughs> I must have derped around for a bunch <laughs> uh, and then decided to cut that out. Yeah, this is all this is all edited edited when I when I played um, yeah like a year ago. So I think um, another I? challenge of this game is like you know for games like Zelda, I think I was watching like a video about this a long time ago. But it's a, a lot of these dungeons about like creating like a you know like a mental oh. map of like this is where this is, this is where this is. Here's how to get to here from there, things like that. And you kind of like build that mental map uh, yeah. as you go through a dungeon. Here, like. You know, the entire game is a dungeon, and it seems very difficult to, like, build that mental map. So when I was thinking, like, oh, hey, you know, we were playing around with, the, with like, the toy boat, and I was like, oh, you can move it back and, you know, back and forth. Does that affect, like, the actual boat? But then I'm like, wait, I don't even know where the original boat is. Like, it just seems impossible to, like, find yeah. your way back to the original boat and then find your way back to the model to, like, see if, you know, see if anything changed and to play and around. And part of, part of that might just be the fact that, or that, that's probably only compounded by the fact that we're playing this a year after the previous, or right. watching this a year after the previous part, so. Right. All that is lost. That's sad, but I mean, that's like, I guess that's the appeal of the, like, pick up and play games, right? It's just that it doesn't matter when you last played it, you can always just, like, pick it up and, yeah. and have a good time. Yeah. This is probably not a not a pick up and play game. Uh, you probably need to play in long sessions. Uh, but I think a lot of the some of the best games are like that. You know, Dark Souls. I got pretty far last time I played Dark Souls. I was playing on Switch. I got pretty far actually. I think I got like uh, maybe three fourths of the way through the game, and then I stopped for like a month, um, uh, or for several months actually. And when I came back, I couldn't even beat like the guys that were around where my last bonfire was so it just yeah was there's just a lot of like muscle memory too right yeah i basically lost all the muscle memory and all like the the timing prediction and th things like that so i couldn't even beat those those damn skeleton guys in the catacombs <laughs> or not the catacombs the the tomb of giants wherever nito is uh grave lord nito anyways that's dark souls so this is oh another little secret passageway Oh wait, are we near the beginning? Uh, the, we're in the pyramid. We're in the I think pyramid. right now I'm heading back to the um, either the harp, probably the harp room is where I'm headed. Okay. Now. Okay, yeah, because this seems very familiar. I guess we're just backtracking, retracing our steps. Yeah, because I think I have all the, I probably have all the things for the harp. Oh, all the I screws. must have. The reason why there's a cut is probably because I just looked up in a guide where the where the last, like, um, harp, uh, key was. Man, these CD transitions, this is insane. Yeah. But the alternative, and I was, I was talking with some friends today who was, like, who, I think, like, The Witcher went on sale or something, and then they downloaded it, and they're like, oh my god, it's, like, 60 gigabytes. Um, and I know, like, you know, like, the old Final Fantasy game for PlayStation or whatever had like four discs or eight discs or something ridiculous yeah that's probably the price to pay but it's <laughs> it is still um 
you know, it's just weird seeing like disc transitions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this game is this game must be pretty big because it's got it's got just a ton of images, a ton of video, oh. um, and a ton of panoramas as well. Right. So it must be a pretty it must be a pretty big game, um, and I guess it was not re- they didn't release it on DVD, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got to put it across several cds yeah i mean that was the standard right like all the games that we had even like all the sonic games like sonic adventure sonic heroes that we had for pc those all had multiple discs well if i remember correctly though you installed um uh one disc and then you would play using the other disc uh so that That way you didn't actually need to switch discs during the game that sounds right um Although I think I think this actually had three discs: one that yeah. you install, and then two that you switch between. Interesting. I wonder if that how like difficult that is to like coordinate or like you know to implement like a multiple disc thing. Like, is there like a lot of like stuff behind the scenes, or is it just kind of like as easy as just like splitting the assets in half? You know, this half is here, and then create like a loading zone, and then this half is here. Yeah, I think I think it could actually be very tricky to implement. Um, Yeah, like, um, well, I guess if you have, um, hmm, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know how, how people, how you would implement something like that. It seems like there could be a lot of tricky edge cases, like, what if you're right. playing and then the disc gets, gets ejected, what does the game do, right? Yeah, or, like, the wrong disc gets put in, or... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, going back to that accessibility point in, like, Unity... Um, or like the one analog is like CGI and film today is that like you lose kind of like you know there's like a lot of work put into these like little tricks and like innovations um, in both film and games I think that like you know with the advent of like CGI and with like Unity and things like that like you kind of like lose the need for these innovations which is on one hand a good thing of course because of the accessibility but on the other hand like you know it's like less of that like cleverness if you will or i mean maybe it's just like translating into like different areas but it is sad to see like some of these tricks not really being used not needed anymore uh yeah i think i see what you're saying these tricks are sort of interesting intellectually but i don't know i don't know if it's necessarily the same thing because i do feel like with cgi movies actually got worse but with greater technology games have pretty much gotten better uh and like you know, I, I know maybe this is controversial to say that new games are better than old games, but I do think that like if you go and actually like try and play most old games, uh, there's all sorts of like frustrations and like design issues that like people don't remember when they when they like are nostalgic about a game. Like for example, Metroid. Um, the old Metroid games are pretty good, but they all have got like really dumb moments where you're just supposed to walk through a wall or something like that, or shoot a very specific tile in order to unlock some area right uh and those design things would never would never fly today well that makes sense but just to uh just to play devil's advocate i guess like just because games have become more streamlined and more obvious that doesn't necessarily like retroactively you know like make the designs of the old games bad like we're used to these things today but like just because they weren't you know what i mean does that kind of make sense well i think that the new um there's like a renaissance of retro inspired games that are coming out today right like you right. know um, shovel knight cuphead the messenger all sorts of sure, stuff sure um i think that the new retro inspired games are better than the original games were back in the day that's probably true because they've taken they've taken all the design lessons and improved on it a little bit more as well as they're just easier to play because they run on modern systems without any problems right yeah, I think um, with games especially, we just look past so many things. Um, I mean, we were playing like Sonic Heroes, and some of those levels, like you just ran around like the same stage. Oh man, those, that game, like... the game had had levels that were just too long and too boring. Yeah, those levels were like 15 minutes long. I mean, yeah. and you got like, it's like a the Sonic same, game. Yeah, the same ships or like the same forest or whatever. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong like I still you know think like a lot of levels were cool but uh, we just I mean we just put up with so much stuff 
maybe it was because we were kids. Maybe it was also because games just there weren't there weren't other yeah. options available. <laughs> and also, I think maybe it was a little bit of, of obsession with the Sonic character. Right, like, right. I don't know what it is, but about kids and Sonic. But you know, there's just like a like I don't know. Sonic is just an especially appealing character to kids for some reason. Yeah, he goes fast, man. Uh, so what happened here is um, I think I turned uh, the statue or the cylinder things to match the eye color, uh, which I'd probably written down from that previous room. So there was a statue with the, the statues had the eye color and I matched up the eye, eye color, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then that didn't work. Uh, so okay. what I did was um, I then looked at the scroll and the scroll has got uh, a bunch of circles uh, and only some of those circles have got heads in them, if you remember seeing yeah um so what i figure is that you only have to uh um select the right color for the cylinders um with the heads on them uh-huh and i think the other ones for the other two that you just make them empty i, I don't i forget if that was an option but uh, i should um correctly do it this time yeah so we're gonna go back and, and try it yeah oh, i guess we're already here It's also, how do you know like which way to orient yourself in the room? Like, is uh, the right side like the top side of the map? Is the right side like the bottom side of the map? I think the scroll showed um, the stairs on one end and a wheel on the other end. Uh, that that's actually a really cool design, I think, or just like a cool little tell. Uh, you gotta love those like show don't tells. Oh yeah, so I think, so this thing is like glitched. And what I noticed is that um, so it doesn't actually change once you turn it, but I figure that um, if you if you turn it, then go to the previous screen, and then go back up, then it updates properly. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if this if if the game is just completely glitched or if this was like some issue with like running it now, uh, it creates this problem, or running in the virtual machine creates this problem. Um, I mean, at this point, it seems impossible to diagnose one or the other, right? Yeah, and certainly no one is patching this, so... Right. <laughs> so we're just fixing the colors now? Uh, yeah, I'm actually not sure what I'm doing, because I thought um, I had to make some empty. Um, but it looks like... Uh, Maybe I just had the colors wrong the first time. Yeah, the orientation maybe. Oh wait, these are all. Gr oh, I can't even see. Okay, now I see. Oh, perhaps yeah. the empty ones had to be white, maybe. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Now it looks like you're putting green, or is that black? I'm pretty sure the colors eye? here are are to match the. Um, uh, are to match the color, the eye colors of the statues from the previous uh, area. Oh, okay, okay. So, is there going to be some like something happening when you put them in the right orientation? Or, oh, you have to spin the wheel. Wait, what's going on? Oh, doesn't seem like anything happened. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see that they put the stairs though. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I'm just derping around. I, I feel like maybe I should have cut this out. <laughs> I mean, there must have been, there must have been a reason why you left it in, right? Uh, probably not. Maybe you have to getting... analyze 2018, you. See, yeah, uh, what just you were getting thinking. lazy with the editing. Maybe, yeah. But that's also that's the fun, you know, is uh laboring through these puzzles. I remember um, my Pokemon Nuzlocke. Um, I was playing, I was playing like Sapphire, I think, or Ruby, and there was this one, you know, one of those like strength puzzles where you have to move around the boulders. And my friend and I were sitting there for like 20 minutes or even longer, and we just had like no idea what was going on. Didn't cut out any of it. Maybe I should have, but yes. whatever. Where am I going? Oh, I think I might be going back to the colors, possibly. Yeah, just to check. Now, but it's also tough in 
the colors room because I don't remember any way to orient yourself in the colors room to know like you know. I which... think you could see the boat in the middle of that room as well. Oh, okay, okay. I guess that's pretty cool then. Some like clues point you in the right direction. I'm optimistic though. I see that there's not that much time left in the video, so I'm gonna guess that you solved the puzzle and then that opens up something and then you cut it. Oh, but... it looks like I've given up actually. <laughs> oh, you gave up. Oh, I've oh had, I've had now we're at the, the harp. Uh, to the harps. Okay, I'm down for the harps though. Yeah, maybe maybe if we ever remember how to play this game again, we can go back and uh, do that puzzle. Well, I definitely did solve the boat puzzle. Uh -huh. um, I guess perhaps I didn't do it in this part. No, I think I think I must have done it. Well, we'll see. <laughs> it's a, it's a surprise if I solve it's a it in this surprise. Part or there not. you go. Yeah, it's a surprise to us too. Did you have to, like play the note after you put in the peg? I don't think so. No. So the the notes, the ability to play the harp is just like a red herring almost. Oh right, right. Because yeah, I thought I, I think initially I thought you had to play the notes to match the harp that's downstairs, but. That I'm not being the case. You just yeah. have to put in the, all the right keys. How do you know which key belongs in which harp? Uh, I think they've got like a marking. Um, so there's like a marking on the harp and then a marking on the. Oh, I got you. Uh, on okay. the key as well. Are we missing a key? Pillar key. Oh, oh yeah, I, I see. I see. Yeah, there's like a little drawing. Oh. Whoa. Okay. What was that, that? happened? Did you see a, a red? Uh... Yeah, I saw the big red flash. Uh, I don't know what that is. Gotta leave it in. <laughs> just for uh, <laughs> just, uh, just for just memes. Scare. It's a jump scare. Yeah, we gotta put some jump scares in this game, right? Just to uh, increase the tension. Okay. There's one more. Um. Uh, what two two remaining pegs now? I think I lost count. Uh, yeah, it looks like two harps left. Yeah, this inventory, I think, definitely could be optimized if they um if they end up redoing the game. Yeah. But oh wait, something that automatically just like tells you if you have something if you have the right item in your inventory you don't have to dig through it you just it just automatically yeah lets you just do contextual it. yeah yeah all right so let's see what happens when you put the last one in is it, this is the last one right uh yeah oh wait i think so Did something happen? Oh, uh, you gotta go downstairs and then play the harp again. Oh, okay. Okay, it's kind of annoying that they make you click through this entire snake thing, but I guess it's a it's a cool effect. Yeah. Where's the original harp though? Is it also down here or is it in another room? Uh it's down here. The loading symbol. <laughs> that means you did something right. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, I, oh. That now you get the key, heart. The keys to find the keys. What is that? Yeah. I don't know if I know what that's for, actually. Oh, okay, all right, here we well, go. We're yeah. done with that part. Looks like uh, we're done with this part, but thank you all for joining us. Hopefully, we'll get out part four soon-ish.